The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon. My name is Courtney Kendall from the, from the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, and I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar, Community Solar Scenario Tool, also known as DSST. We're excited to have you with us today. We'll give folks a few more minutes to call in and log on. So while we wait, I will go over some logistics, and then we'll get going with today's webinar. I want to mention that this webinar will be recorded, and everyone today is on listen-only mode. You have two options for how you can hear today's webinar. In the upper right corner of your screen, there's a box that says audio mode. This will allow you to choose whether or not you want to listen to the webinar through your computer speakers or a telephone. Select either use telephone or use mic and speakers. If you select use telephone, the box will display the telephone number and specific audio pin you should use to dial in. We will have a question and answer session at the end of the presentation. You can participate by submitting your questions electronically during the webinar. Please do this by going to the questions pane in the box showing on your screen. There you can type in any question that you have during the course of the webinar. Our speakers will address as many questions as time allows after the presentation. Our first speaker today is Aaron Nobler. Aaron is a project leader in the Integrated Application Center at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, also known as, 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 also known as NREL. She focuses primarily on solar policy work and is the task lead of the Quick Response Technical Assistance Program. Now I'd like to go ahead and introduce Erin Nobler. She will go ahead and start us off with today's presentation. Erin? Thanks so much, Courtney. Um, yeah, so you won't be hearing too much from me. Before I hand it over to our presenters, I just wanted to give you a brief overview of our, our program. So STAT. STAT stands for Solar Technical Assistance Team, and this project is funded by the Department of Energy Solar Program in coordination with NREL and Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, uh, who also provides assistance. The purpose of uh, STAT is to offer current credible information to state and local government decision makers on policies, regulations, financing, and some other issues that states and localities are currently dealing with. So as we like to say, STAT offers three different flavors of technical assistance. Education, which includes web webinars, such as the one you're listening to right now, and fact sheets on various topics. And then quick response is a one-on-one -on -one technical assistance that requires fast turnaround. And then in-depth is our third type, and that is also one-on-one -on -one technical assistance, but for longer-term requests. So to learn more about the broader effort of the stat, please visit the website on the page where you can find um, more detailed information on our offerings here at NREL. So more on this year's series. You're currently listening to the fourth and final webinar in our summer series for do-it-yourself solar market analysis. These webinars have been occurring throughout the summer once per month on the second Wednesday uh, from noon to one. So as you can see, today we're discussing our community solar scenario tool. And because we are in the final one, I wanted to make a plug that you can listen to all of the previous webinars from this series by visiting the STAT webpage on the NREL site. And to learn more about future webinars and the STAT effort more broadly, please subscribe to our listeners. And finally, I have a request for all of you listeners. As we close this summer series out, we'd like to request your feedback. At the end of this webinar, you will see a questionnaire pop up with just a few short questions. By providing us your feedback, uh, we'll be able to develop additional educational products to help answer your questions. So please do take the two minutes to fill it out. And with that, I would like to introduce our speakers for today, Jason Coughlin and John Mingle. Jason is a solar energy analyst here at the lab who focuses on solar finance and has been at the lab for about eight years. And John is a senior engineer at the lab and has been with us for a little over five years. John focuses on modeling and project deployment work uh, here. So Jason will be speaking first to give you an overview of the community solar tool, so I'll pass it to him. Jason? Thanks, Aaron, and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we appreciate you carving out an hour to kind of walk through this tool with us. Uh, before we get into the tool itself, uh, what I wanted to do is just make sure we're all on the same page as it relates to what community or often called shared solar is. Uh, and then we can uh, kind of get into the details of uh, the focus of today's conversation. So uh, for folks that may be new to the concept of community solar, this idea that it's an off-site solar project which allows customers of a given utility to benefit from uh, a PV system without having to installed on their premises per se. Um, as many of you are aware, there's a number of ownership options out there in the market, and that seems to be growing uh, as the community solar model and concept grows across the country as well. But we see utility-owned projects and third-party-owned projects. 
uh, participants in these community solar uh, gardens or community solar farms can either make a one-time upfront payment and then receive bill credits for a 20 to 25 year period, or there's a pay-go or monthly payment uh, structure that you'll see set up where customers make a monthly payment and get the, the corresponding output uh, from their share of the community solar garden. Uh, they can receive this as either a bill credit in kilowatt hours or denominated in dollars. And there's numerous examples of community solar projects and programs across the country. As you can see on the right, there's different pricing schemes uh, that you'll see out in the marketplace as it relates to the customer's uh, participation in these gardens. You may see a per module or per solar panel price. You may see a per watt price. Uh, you can buy blocks of solar energy, if you will. That's the TEP or Tucson Electric Power uh, model. We've got monthly, again, pay-as-you-go uh, structures. And then you've got a per kilowatt hour structure as well. So lots of ways you can structure these community uh, solar projects. So real quick, what community solar is not, just so again we're all on the same page. Some of you may be familiar with this concept of solarize or group purchasing of solar. I like to think of this as many people uh, procuring many systems for individual rooftop systems. Uh, so we're not talking about solarize, and nor are we talking about this crowdsource, crowdfunding, community investment model. And again, Solar Mosaic is a, uh, a good example of that. So these aren't a community solar for the purposes of today's conversation and the tool that we've put together. Uh, Vote Solar has a nice database out there on existing community solar projects. So if you haven't seen that site, check it out. And, and certainly if you've got a community solar project, add yours to this uh, crowdsourced database. And then finally, I have a slide here with a couple of um, uh, additional resources, uh, one from IRAC and one from the DOE Sunshot uh, program, um, all about community solar and shared renewable energy programs. And so moving on now to the tool, uh, what we tried to do is, uh, and give you a bit of history of this tool, we had gotten a request from a, a, a state government to help them model different potential community solar structures. Uh, and so we modeled this. Uh, we, we created this community solar tool, and when we were finished with it, we decided to kind of create something a bit more user-friendly um, and allow users to do what we're calling a first-cut analysis of the economics of a community solar garden, both from the utilities perspective and the customer's perspective. Um, we're targeting what I would call a kind of groups new to community solar. So folks who have been doing community solar for quite a while, sophisticated uh, stakeholders, large utilities, uh, prominent community solar developers, uh, these folks all have pretty robust internal models. And we've spoken with these entities. And, and, uh, and we all agree that the tool we've put together is a good first step for folks that may be exploring a community solar project, uh, but certainly not robust enough for uh, more advanced uh, community solar developers. Uh, one thing to note, and John will get into it a bit more when we turn to the tool, is that as some of you are aware, in addition to the utility-owned community solar model, there are uh, community solar project structures out there where a solar party, a third-party solar developer develops the project and is kind of in between the utility and the participants, if you will. Uh, currently, the tool doesn't model that sort of structure. Uh, Again, we're trying to balance simplicity, first cut analysis, um, with trying to also stay kind of with the market as it evolves. But currently, you're not going to see the ability to model this third party developer uh, model in the tool. And then finally, we're releasing this tool as we're calling it a beta version because we've had a number of kind of focus group calls related to the tool. But we really want to get additional user input to improve the tool because we want to eventually move it away from a spreadsheet-based tool and more of a, John likes to call it, kind of a TurboTax, uh, more user-friendly tool. But before we kind of pursue a migration of that sort, we want to get folks playing with the tool and uh, giving us suggestions on how to improve it. 
Um, you can see where you can access the tool on the NREL website. And with that, let me turn it over to my colleague, John, who is the brains behind the spreadsheet. And then uh, after we walk through what, then what it does, we'll open it up for questions. So John, you can <coughs> take it from there. Great. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate that. Um, <coughs> so I'd like to uh, just walk through uh, the tool. It's got several tabs on it. And just show you what's on the tabs. And then we've got, a, we've got an example here. Uh, from the Orlando Utility Commission, <clears throat> uh, just to, and we'll be using this data to kind of walk through the, the tool and show you how it works. So, <clears throat> let me just expand this window. That was the wrong expansion. Okay. So as I, as I said, we've got several tabs on the tool. <clears throat> uh, this, the first uh, tab is just the introduction. It just gives you some text background on the tool and uh, uh, some, some quick direction on how to use it. A lot, of the, uh, a lot of the instructions on using the tool are built into comments in the individual cells. So we start with the input tab. And this is where all of the green boxes are, are inputs. And this is where you would fill in information to make the tool run. And as I mentioned, each input box has a comment on it just to help, help the user, help prompt the user with some information about uh, what kind of information goes in the box and how, how it's going to be used in the calculations. Um, <clears throat> the Outputs tab uh, contains the information, looking at, contains the financial information, uh, as Jason said, from the subscriber perspective. Uh, as well as from the utility perspective. And then we've got a couple of charts that show the, uh, compare the effective cost of purchasing electricity from the community solar tool versus an escalated utility rate. And then we've got a couple of different ways of looking at uh, uh, prices from the, from the community solar uh, system. And then we also have uh, an output of estimated monthly generation from the system, as well as the average generation, just to give <clears throat> uh, just to give a comparison. Uh, I know that some utilities or some programs might like to bill on uh, on a, just a flat uh, average based on generation, and some others might like to bill on an actual generation. So we include this just to give an idea of what the what, what the fluctuations might look like in generation. And those are the two most important user tabs. Uh, we've included uh, three others here just for transparency. The capacity-based model tab contains uh, all of the calculations in the tool, as well as documentation on where all of the information in this uh, sheet comes from. So you can see we take a lot of information from the inputs tab, and then there are a lot of calculations uh, that we go through here uh, to generate the uh, financial information. The data tab is where uh, we collect information from PV watts. Um, and I'll show you in just a minute how that works. Um, so we collect information from PV watts <clears throat> for a particular location. And then we can generate uh, a bunch of information about uh, the generation for the system, taking into account um, uh, panel degradation, as well as calculating uh, some financial uh, information around the generation. And then the, at the end, we have a very simple uh, LCOE calculator. Uh, we put this in just to give kind of an order of magnitude idea of <clears throat> what the costs of power would be like from a particular system. Um, and we'll go back to the inputs tab. And working from the inputs, from, let's see, there we go. So we can work from these inputs. Uh, this is from the, again, from the Orlando Utility Commission. <clears throat> we have a 400 kilowatt PV project. Um, OUC buys the power at 18 cents a kilowatt hour under a PPA. <clears throat> Excuse me. And there's subscriptions, people, there's subscriptions between 1 and 15 kilowatts, uh, 15, 1 and 15 kilowatt pieces of the system. Um, at a charge of 13 cents 
per kilowatt hour, which is about fourteen fifty six a month for one kilowatt. Fifty dollar upfront fee, <coughs> and uh, the solar rate is roughly one and a half cents to two and a half cents per kilowatt hour, more than retail rates, but uh, fixed for twenty five years, and that's that's one of the benefits of uh, buying electricity from a community solar program is a fixed cost of electricity. Uh, let's see, go back to the spreadsheet. So with this information, we've populated the system size, the project lifetime, number of shares. So we're assuming here in this model, uh, one kilowatt per share. Um, since we know the uh, PPA price, we can go ahead and put that in. Uh, enter that into this uh, cell right here. If we don't know an LCOE price or a PPA price, this is where the LCOE calculator comes in. And you can use this button to get the calculated LCOE from the tool, or if you get this update the solar resource data, the LCOE will be automatically calculated for you and then populated into this sheet. Uh, but again, in this situation, we know the PPA price, so we don't need to uh, we don't need to run through that. If there were um, if there were known administrative costs to the utility for managing uh, the community solar system, then that information would go in here. Um, <clears throat> if you know tilt angle, system derate factor, uh, panel degradation, uh, you could fill out this information down here. If you don't know it, there are appropriate defaults. Uh, for the system. And then the system location. You can input city and state as well as the average residential electric rate and this was information that we gathered from the EIA website <laughs> as well as calculating an, es an escalation rate from historical data from the EIA website. So if you know this information uh, you can you can put it in um, and <clears throat> that will have an impact on the outputs. And then any uh, any subscriber rebates or bill credits or anything like that that might be uh, additional incentives for subscribers into the system can be entered in here. Now, if you, when you type in the city and state or you change the system size, you can click this, the Get Solar Resource Data, and that will go out to our PV Watts tool and repopulate <clears throat> the spreadsheet with the appropriate resource information for that location, and then generate outputs based on the resource information. Oh, I almost forgot, the tax-exempt entity. You can also uh, set this up for tax-exempt or non-tax-exempt entities uh, using, using these radio buttons. And they will change the, uh, alter the financial calculations based on whether or not uh, the IT, federal ITC is included and different interest rates for uh, non-tax-exempt or tax-exempt entities. And in the outputs, uh, you can see here, um, <clears throat> under the subscriber perspective, you can see that what the average monthly charge uh, per share for, uh, from electricity would be from the system, as well as you know if there are any bill credits. In this case, we are including a five cent bill credit to reflect the eighteen <clears throat> excuse me eighteen cent PPA price and a fifteen cent or excuse me, 13 cent uh, electricity price. This is Jason. Let me uh, hop in here uh, real quick too. Just just to set the stage, what we're, and so folks are clear, the idea behind this model is I'm a utility and I'm either going to go out and procure a solar facility and that uh, procurement would have, a, have an LCOE value associated with it. Um, and I would use that LCOE value uh, in the uh, the inputs tab, or alternatively, I'm going to go sign a power purchase agreement and buy that solar electricity uh, <coughs> for some PPA price. Um, and then once we know that LCOE or PPA price, basically what the model is doing is building a uh, monthly or a one-time payment to the utility from a hypothetical subscriber to participate in the community solar garden. 
And so what John is walking through here is kind of the output from both the utilities perspective and the subscribers perspective. Um, given that we see utilities as one of the uh, users of the tool, ideally in partnership with potential subscribers or other stakeholders, we're hoping that folks you know, have their own LTOE and PPA information and don't necessarily rely on the LTOE calculator because it is kind of a, uh, a very rough cut uh, tool. But again, if you don't have any uh, uh, ideas about what an LTOE for a given solar project might be in your area, then going back to that input tab by using you know, system size and dollar per watt uh, the system does calculate a, a very rough LCOE, if you will, but we're assuming and, and actually hoping that uh, folks will actually come to the model with a good sense of a PPA price or an LCOE range, um, and then we can get right into uh, the actual output. So I wanted to make that clear that, you know, put yourself in the shoes of a utility, utilities procuring solar, uh, we make the utility whole with the subscriber payment to begin the model, and then we design this bill credit for sort of a give back, if you will, uh, <clears throat> to come up with the net uh, average monthly cost. You know, one of the things about this tool, it's a bit, uh, it can be, get a bit complicated. We're not necessarily convinced that our, our name titles are the most appropriate. So one of the things we want to source from you all is kind of ways to maybe improve um, what we're calling different things and you know, again, in line with your overall input on the usability and uh, worthwhileness of the tool in its current stage. So sorry to interrupt, John, but I'll turn oh, it back over to you. That's okay. That's great. Thanks, Jason. I uh, <clears throat> didn't have too much more to say about this. I was just going to go over, you know, some of the financial outputs, and then I think we can open it up for questions at that point. So again, from the subscriber perspective, um, there are, <clears throat> excuse me, monthly uh, monthly bill credits, monthly charge per share, uh, what the net average monthly cost would be uh, per share, <clears throat> and uh, some, some other financial uh, information here. And then from the utility perspective, it's the same kind of thing. It's like how, you know, the cost of annual cost of generation, or excuse me, annual cost of production. And this would include uh, if we had entered in some uh, administrative costs, that would be factored into this as well. Um, you know, utility or monthly cost um, <clears throat> per share to the utility and some other information, as well as in these charts. Again, you can <clears throat> you can see how um, you can see what it looks like to buy uh, power from the community solar uh, project versus uh, purchasing electricity from the utility. And that's reflected here in this blue line, which, which represents the escalated uh, utility rate. Uh, the green line, or excuse me, the red line, is the cost of purchasing power from the community solar system without any incentives. And then the green line is um, the cost of purchasing power from the community solar system with this, in this case, the five cent per kilowatt hour bill credit. And you can see here where they where they cross. And so at the beginning, at the beginning of the project, um, the electricity from the from the community solar project might be more expensive than the utility. But at a, at a certain point, they're going to cross over, and because it's a fixed price compared to an escalating price, you're going to start to realize some benefit uh, further out. So I think those are kind of the the key points. Uh, that we wanted to hit on is, as Jason said, this is um, we're still developing this tool, and we really want to get some feedback on the utility of the tool. Is it helpful? Or, you know, are the are the outputs helpful? Um, what can we do to to make the tool to improve the tool to you know better serve uh, the people we're trying to focus this tool towards? So I think with that we can open it up for some questions. And before we do that. This is Jason again hopping back on. Just to round out, uh, the reason that we used the Orlando example is we were able to get some good information from both the utilities press release and some news releases about that community solar program. And so what we wanted to do was see 
you know, how close we could come to replicating kind of how we understand things are set up in Orlando. And so basically, um, as it's structured, Orlando is purchasing that power uh, for 18 cents a kilowatt hour, making it available to subscribers at 13 cents a kilowatt hour, and that differential is what we call the bill credit rate. Um, we calculate a net average monthly cost of roughly $13.51 uh, for a subscriber in that community solar garden in Orlando. We understand from the press release that it's actually about $14.56. You know, so we're within a dollar, if you will, of what uh, Orlando is charging its, uh, its customers. And we feel for this tool it's close enough because we're not sure, you know, of any sort of administrative costs or other kind of internal workings of the program that we're not privy to. I think our, our PV Watts call is showing us 104 kilowatt hours uh, per month per share. Uh, and we think the actual amount based on what we've seen from the information from the utility is about 112, 111. Mm -hmm. So again, we don't have the particular specs of the uh, system itself. Where you, so we're using kind of the PV watt D rate uh, uh, defaults, if you will. But again, the idea of using that example is to show that we come up uh, pretty close to what uh, we understand the net average monthly cost is for a subscriber of one kilowatt in that solar garden in Orlando, uh, and also the average monthly production. Um, uh, you can, if you, you know, spend some time on the tool, you'll see that it also calculates a one-time upfront payment, uh, which is basically the present value of the monthly uh, payments that we calculate. And the box that says utility perspective just kind of shows you the cost associated with the program from the utility's perspective. Uh, in this tool, if, let's say, for example, uh, Orlando decided to buy the power at 18 and sell it at 18, um, then they would be made whole, if you will, in uh, our model uh, rather than you can see in that uh, tab there, average annual cost of the utility to offer the program with that five cent bill credit, you know, they're out roughly $25,000. Uh, that would be zero if they decided to offer it at 18 and not provide that five cent discount to the PPA price. So I just wanted to make that clear and we recognize that uh, it might be a bit complicated to follow the model and that some of you might want to go play with the model and we might get even better feedback after we had a time uh, to kind of see what's behind the cells and run some of your own numbers. Great. Thank you so much, John and Jason and Aaron. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started with the question and answer set part of the session today. And uh, we'll get to as many questions as time allows. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, Is the tool only for, of use for cities that own their own utility, for example, that buy wholesale and sell retail? Well, we, we kind of envision, and we've had some conversations with different uh, associations, we envision uh, some likely users to be electric co-ops, maybe municipal utilities that haven't established their own community solar programs. Uh, Potentially investor-owned utilities, but we feel that you know we're talking about a certain size that um, they would have their own internal modeling uh, that's more sophisticated than what we put together. So, uh, so I would say it's 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 for it's for cities that have a municipal utility, but also for uh, electric co-ops and other uh, stakeholders. I could see some some community groups using it to kind of model. Yeah. hypothetical scenarios and then they could maybe bring that to their utility and say, hey, we'd like to gauge your interest in starting a pilot program. Uh, so certainly we envision a broader user group than just Mooney utilities. Okay. Um, uh, next question here, would a small city be large enough to make a city-owned solar farm feasible? Um, I mean, we see, for example, in Colorado, there's a number of electric co-ops that have small community solar gardens. I think there's a lot of examples across the country of small gardens. So um, 
So I, I don't think the size of the city or the size of the co-op is a limitation. You know, we've seen solar gardens as small as 10 kilowatts, uh, uh, and we've seen them as large as, you know, many megawatts. So, uh, so I would say size isn't necessarily uh, a limiting factor as long as you had interesting, uh, interested uh, potential subscribers that are willing to pay uh, to participate in the program. Any utility that's willing to offer. Okay, the model has two categories, uh, tax exempt and the non-tax exempt. Wouldn't most projects being built use the ITC or taxable benefits by partnering with um, a for-profit company to develop the project? Yeah, that's a great point. It gets back to our kind of our rough LCOE calculator. So if a utility is going to buy power from a, from a uh, third-party developer under a power purchase agreement, then that PPA price will have already um, monetized, if you will, the, the tax benefits. And so you wouldn't even go into our LCOE model. Uh, basically, what our LCOE model is assuming, um, let's say we have a tax-exempt uh, electric co-op that's going to go out and buy a solar facility. So they would be obviously a tax exempt entity. And the way our LTOE model works is basically says what's their capital cost. And we do a rough four, four and a half percent interest rate for 10 years because initially we just had overnight capital costs and we felt that that was under reporting the LTOE value. So we did a few kind of rough uh, kind of cost of capital calculations. Um, but we would assume, again, that most folks would come to the table with uh, their own LTOE or PPA. Conceivably, a taxable uh, entity, a small taxable IOU could buy the, the project uh, and offer it to its subscribers. You, know, you do have the tricky issue of normalization and depreciation, but, um, but, uh, but the, the, the person who posed that question is correct. Most situations that we envision is a a third party seller of the power under a PPA um, and then simply that PPA price would be your primary input into the model and you can just skip um, the, uh, the cost uh, inputs, uh, if you will. Okay, we have a few more coming in. Uh, so there's a question here about in the OUC example uh, that the PV price is of one and a half to two and a half cents more than retail, but it's fixed for 25 years. Um, so does it mean that the PV is always added to the cost uh, of utility rates? As I understand the Orlando model, uh, it's 13 cents is fixed for the life of the program. Um, and as John's uh, graph pointed out, depending on what utility rates do in Orlando, we we gather that residential rates in Orlando now are about 11 cents, 11 and a half cents. So our understanding, and for most of these community solar projects, you know, one of the ways and one of the advantages that uh, proponents of these community solar projects kind of offer is that you may pay up more now, but you're locking in your cost of power for the next 20 years. So eventually there'll be this crossover rate where you're paying less than retail. Some people talk about it in ter terms of a, a hedge uh, against escalating re uh, retail utility prices for the amount that you purchase under the community solar garden. Um, let's see. Real quick, does the model calculate ITC and depreciation benefits? It does if you click on taxable entity. Um, but very, and it calculates the value of ITC at 30. We use that 26% value from Lawrence, Liber, uh, Lawrence Berkeley uh, for the value of depreciation, um, and then we add a, an 8% cost of capital. Again, really rough. Um, if you really want to calculate a, a more robust LCOE, we would recommend the uh, solar advisor model that NREL has available where you can get uh, uh, much more uh, finely tuned LCOE prices. Uh, how do you calculate the average escalated retail rate? That is basically from EIA data, right, John? The, the information <coughs> in. So yeah, we're basically saying the users have to go out 
Um, we're going to try to develop a call to EIA similar to the call to TV Watt. Yeah. Um, but uh, for now, you go to EIA and you can put in what your expectations for future utility rate increases will be. <clears throat> yeah, what, what I did to calculate this uh, escalated rate was collect some uh, historical information and then just look at the change, the year-to-year -year change, and then take the average of that. So it's uh, it's pretty rough, but you know, lacking any other indicators, you know, we thought it was probably uh, pretty usable. But again, it's not an automated call yet. Okay, great. Thank you both. Um, we encourage you to ask any questions that you have at this time. It looks like uh, that is all we have at this moment. But please, we'll wait a few. We'll go ahead and wait a few minutes. More questions. And, and real quick, as John and I have mentioned, more value may be in now that you know the tool exists. You have a, a basic understanding of how it's put together, why it was put together. Mm -hmm. uh, for those that uh, think it might be something uh, of interest to them. Uh, go ahead and download it, uh, you know, play around with it, and then you can see John's contact information is associated with the model at the NREL website, uh, and so feel free to kind of email him, and we can kind of walk you through uh, any, any issues you might have with it. And again, just as important, we're trying to make sure, you know, we're here at the lab developing tools. We certainly uh, collaborate with folks out in the field, but uh, for folks that are going to use this tool and that have done community solar uh, projects, uh, please make suggestions on how to make it better. Again, we want to eventually make it more user-friendly and migrate it to a different platform, but we'd like to capture all the improvements mm -hmm. in the spreadsheet version before we do that migration. So we are looking for kind of your help as well in making this a, a useful tool, and so all comments are certainly appreciated. Great. And um, if you have any at this at this point, if you have any um, comments or questions, you can also send them to stats at nrel.gov or to John Nangle uh, directly at john n a n g l e at nrel.gov as well for uh, suggestions, feedback, ideas on the community solar tool. Um, at this point, uh, we would like to thank. Aaron Nobler, Jason Coughlin, and John Nagel for their time today. The files will be available at a later date. We will send out an email with a link to the files to all the registrants and attendees um, of today's presentation. And um, we want to also remind you to fill out the questionnaire at the very end of this uh, presentation today. So please fill it out. And um, this concludes today's webinar. Thank you for attending, and goodbye. <laughs>